Hi, this is Kurt with The Cool Odyssey coming to you today from Salmon, Idaho. I'm here today, I'm gonna to give you guys an exterior tour of my Bigfoot RV. It's pretty much all completed with the renovations, been using it for a few months, and I figured I'd give you a walkthrough of everything I've done on the outside uh, before I give you guys a walkthrough of the inside. Okay guys, so here's the exterior of the RV, and as you can see, I've kind of changed up a few things. Uh, number one, I got rid of all the original stickers and decals. Um, and one issue from doing that, as you might be able to tell as we get closer, I'll show you, but you end up with some ghosting left from the old decals. So I still haven't decided if I'm gonna try to get those polished out. Um, I honestly haven't worked that hard on the outside yet to see what all it's gonna try to take to make that go away. Um, and the other thing you notice is all the original brown paint that was basically the bottom belt line of the RV. I had all that re-wrapped with black vinyl, kind of a matte finish black. Uh, so that kind of changed the look and makes it a little cleaner. Um, so if I get a little closer, you'd be able to see where the original decals were here on the side. It's pretty obvious where they were. Um, but like I said, I have not put too much effort yet into trying to buff that out. So I do still want that to happen. Uh, but here you can see the vinyl wrap that was done on the bottom. It actually turned out pretty well. Um, one of the other changes you'll notice is I decided to change out the stock steel wheels. I actually bought some black aluminum wheels and I've actually put BF Goodrich KO2 tires on. Uh, it gives it a little bit more of an aggressive stance. They're an E-rated 10-ply tire. So far, I love them. I like the look. And obviously, if I take this thing a little bit more off-road, which I plan to do, it's just a little bit nicer than having a highway tread tire. Other than that, the exterior, I have not changed a whole lot. I kept the original window tinting that the uh, original owner put on. Um, I did change out the lights on the side. Uh, the awning was already operational, so I basically just cleaned that up and made sure everything was good there. I did repaint the running boards, originally were a brown color, and I repainted those black so that they match the tires and the wheels. Um, and I can give you a little bit more info on the tire and wheel size if anyone's interested in that, but for now I was just kind of giving you an overview. Um, I'll get up on the roof and give you guys an idea of what I did on the roof, because I have made a lot of modifications up there as well. Coming around the back of the RV, uh, it's kind of hard to tell where I've got it parked, but I do have the RV's name the black pearl. I had some vinyl stickers done to put that on the back. And the rear has been wrapped as well, so all the lower bumper cover has all been wrapped in that same black paint. So that kind of gives you an idea of the outside. So basically all I've really done is just tried to clean it up, make it a little more modern looking, uh, nice clean smooth lines, and that's basically all I've done to the exterior. So I'll give you guys some shots of the roof so you can kind of see what I've done up there. Okay, so this is the roof of the Bigfoot. It is a full fiberglass roof, which was in really good condition when I got it. So I didn't have to do much but clean it up. And what I've done is install 460 watt solar panels to operate my solar charging system. And I've also installed a WineGuard Traveler dish satellite system on the roof. Uh, and my Wi-Fi extender. So that's basically the extent of the work that I've done up on the roof. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to showing you guys the interior. Um, and here you can see this RV does have this really cool step down here, and there's actually a storage bin that opens up, and it actually goes the full length across the floor of the RV, which is really nice for storing extra things. And I've also redone all the flooring in the RV. It's a vinyl plank, and you can see I did that around the wheel well here as well. And if moving on to the inside, it, this is a pretty good view of the flooring. Basically, it's a gray vinyl planking that I've used. And you'll see I have a little ARB refrigerator here on the ground. Serves two purposes. Number one, I can use it to store my beverages in. Uh, and number two, it's my step for getting up into the actual bed. So one of the things you'll notice is I did repaint the entire RV. So all of my cabinets are now this light gray color. And I put all new hardware on the cabinets as well. And I painted the walls of the RV and these light fixtures. I actually made these myself. These are made out of some black iron 
uh, and I redid the water valves so they actually control the lights, which is kind of cool. There's a very neat feature. And then I actually changed out the original sofa that was in here and I bought this new leather sofa. I've got a blanket on there, keep that on there so the dogs don't destroy everything. Then there's another matching of those lights. And as you'll see up here is the cab over area. And I have redone all the paint. I had a custom made mattress made and I made the bed platform permanent. It does not fold up any longer. So now it's permanently in place. Redid all the upholstery with kind of this gray fabric. All of my blinds, I took down the original valances and I recovered the upper portions and I lost the little side pieces that are called lambrequins. I actually took those off and got rid of them. And I replaced my old pleated shades all with MCD shade and blackout shade combinations. So now all those are the same. Everything's been repainted up here. My TV is mounted to a bracket that I made that actually attaches to the floor. I'll give you a better idea how that operates here in a moment. But here you can see a little bit more of the cabinet painting. This gives you a quick glimpse. On this side of the RV, there used to be the dinette. And I tore the entire dinette out. And what I did is I built an entire new cabinet and table area. So I have freestanding chairs. My table actually slides in and out so it can be in during travel or when I just want to have a little more floor space. But then I also can extend it out to have a little bit more eating space. So I built all these new cabinets along here. And I also built these areas on the side which house all of my electrical system which I'll talk about a little bit later. There's another one of these light fixtures that I made here as well and then here's another view of these upper cabinets so as you can see these were all repainted i repainted the original light fixtures and just kept those and painted them black they used to be silver replaced out my air conditioning furnace thermostat with the black unit uh, coming across to this side of the rv you'll see the area where there used to be the tv and the wall that's now completely gone i actually decided to tear that entire wall off and i replaced the entire piece of wood with all new and then this is my wardrobe on this side and there's storage down at the bottom underneath the wardrobe. And this whole area right here is obviously a slide. And then coming into the kitchen, the refrigerator, I got rid of the wood paneling that was on the refrigerator and actually replaced that with some steel. So that allows me to attach photos and whatnot magnetically onto the refrigerator. Redid all of the cabinets in here as well. Um, as you can see, those are all repainted, all new hardware. Uh, the backsplash, I just used some smart tiles. They're actually just vinyl tiles adhered to the wall. And then the countertops are all new. I used Wilson Art, uh, basically the same as a Corian type material. You can work it the same way you work wood. So I built all new countertops of my own. Um, and as you'll notice, I also installed a new sink. So I went with a single stainless sink and a single level lever faucet. And then I also have filtered water in the RV. And I did end up tearing this entire lower kitchen out. Uh, one of the biggest, most important things to me was being able to have my washer and dryer. So down here in this lower cabinet, uh, which I'll show you here now, I actually have my Splendid combination washer dryer unit. So I had to raise my countertops up about two and a half inches to accommodate space for that. But having lived with the washer dryer before, I actually did a video of installing one of these in my prior RV. There was no way I was gonna do without it. So now here I am with a 24 foot class C with a washer dryer combination unit inside. And I love it, it's outstanding. And then on this side, so I'll back up here again, and you'll see here this long cabinet, and I actually redid the interior of this cabinet. It has three very long drawers that are full extension, lots of storage. And then what I've done with the inside is I actually put in three, four pull-out drawers as well. I have this travel storage rod so that nothing opens when I drive. 
And then these as well are long extension, very deep drawers, which is great. So for a very small RV, I do have a ton of pantry space. And then moving on to the other side of the RV, this door leads to the bathroom. So in the bathroom, what I've basically done is obviously I've repainted my door to match the rest of the RV. I've redone my valance and then there's the MCD combination shades as well. Painted the walls. And then probably the biggest change is I built brand new countertops and put the new stainless steel bowl sink and a new lever faucet in there. Installed a nice porcelain toilet. It's always nice if you're in an RV a lot to have a porcelain toilet as opposed to the plastic RV style ones. The shower is also, as you can see, a full bathtub. And there is a light in the shower, which is great. And I've changed this out to an Oxygenix shower head. And then one of the other things I did in this RV, same as I did in my Seneca, I installed a thermostatic shower valve, which I can link to the video on how to install one of those. I did a video on that and I love it in this RV just as much as I loved it in the other. So a couple other things I've done that are of note. I've done a lot of electrical work in the RV. So I have these combination USB 12 volt outlets pretty much throughout the RV. There's some here. I have some installed underneath my table, which makes it convenient to work. And while we're down in this end, I'll give you a quick overview. Something else I did to have this RV set for boondocking and spending extended periods of time not connected to electricity. I changed to a full lithium ion battery setup and Victron Multi Plus inverter. So down in this cabinet is actually my entire electrical cabinet. So here you'll see I've got 400 amp hours of lithium batteries. I have a Multi Plus Victron converter inverter hybrid unit and then all the associated electrical wiring that goes along with it. And then tucked back in the corner, hard to see over here is my solar controller is back in that side. And this hybrid unit is great because you can adjust the amount of power that your RV will pull from a shore connection. So here I'm only plugged into a 15 amp outlet. So I can tell it not to take more than 10 amps and the inverter will actually pick up the slack. And then I also have the Victron color control system, which monitors all the electrical for the lithium batteries and the solar and what's going on. And then this is the monitor screen for the battery management system on my lithium ion batteries. And this is where the original monitoring and everything was done from the RV. So I did install a Victron battery monitor in this compartment, everything else pretty much has remained the same. There's the battery management system controls in this compartment as well. Okay, so my television is actually on a swivel mount so it can turn all the way this direction for viewing sitting on the couch or you can watch it laying in the bed by pushing it back up against the wall. A couple other things of note just on the mechanical side, this RV has 65 gallons of fresh water capacity. In addition to that, it has a 10 gallon hot water heater uh, that's gas, electric, and it's also heated from the engine block. Uh, there are water lines that run back there. Uh, I have 780 watts of solar up on the roof. Uh, RV has been working terrific, thrilled with the changes that were made. So far, downsizing has been a great thing. Looking forward to just spending more and more time with this unit and getting used to it. If you like the video, please subscribe, hit the notification button so you find out when we put out some new content. And again, if there's any specific questions anyone has um, about systems on the RV or things they'd like to know more about, just drop them in the comments and I can make some more videos to kind of give you a better idea and details about some of the other projects that were completed in here. Thank you so much for watching.